Uh, I am honored to introduce uh, Moses King Jr. as our speaker this afternoon. Uh, Mr. King, he has such a, a long list of accomplishments that you can say uh, he, he certainly made history when he was a student at Newberry and he's made it ever since. He was the first African-American basketball player to play at Newberry. He was a District 6 player from 1973 to 76, all Lutheran College 74 to 76, played in the NAIA National Tournament in 75 to 76, and was All-American Honorable Mention his senior year. He was the leading rebounder in the state of South Carolina. His jersey was retired in 1976, the year he graduated, and since then he's been an educator. He coached for, he's coached for 39 years. He's finishing his 42nd year as an educator, 23 years in the public schools and in juvenile corrections since. So I'm delighted to be able to introduce Mr. Mm -hmm. Moses King Jr. Mm -hmm. Thank you, sir. It's an honor. Good afternoon. Uh, with my southern drawl, I don't know if you guys are going to be able to understand me. Uh, you had a social distance, so that is good. Uh, before I get started, uh, Dr. Duffer, I appreciate you. Uh, you know, we've been here. I started here in 1972, and he uh, did not remember not to recognize me when he came in. That meant a lot to me. Uh, D.D. Boyd, All-American here at Newberry, very good friend. He came in in 75, and I came in in 72. Keith McAllister, All-American football player here. Uh, he was a senior when I started as a freshman. So you guys warm my heart to be here and just show you 40 years, you know, it's not a very long time when you are building friendship, okay? Uh, I'm not gonna take much of your time. I know your time is valuable. I know that y'all are young folk and y'all don't wanna really listen to an old man speak forever, but I appreciate you being here. Uh, I came from, back then they were, be mentioned as a mixed family. And before I forget, please forgive me, Coach Taylor. Coach Taylor, I met him, a uh, very good man, and I appreciate you being here. That means a lot to me as well. I came from what you call a mixed family. My grandfather, he was a Caucasian. My grandmother, she was uh, Indian, Navajo as well as uh, black and they are the ones that really reared me coming up. So I was always in that diversity, you know, even as a young person. <clears throat> uh, I remember going shopping at stores at a ver very early age when they had black and white water fountains. They had black and white movie theaters. Uh, if we happened to go to a white movie theater, the blacks always had to sit in the balcony. Um, so those type of things. Uh, you couldn't just go and dine in a, a diner. Uh, you had to go to a, uh, a soul food place if we were going to, you know, go out and eat. But as a family, we didn't do a lot of going out. Uh, your public buses, uh, I remember sitting in the back of the bus. You couldn't ride in the front of the bus. Uh, during my teenage years, I can remember my mother going to purchase a car. And after she got the price of the car, my grandfather, who was white, he would go and uh, ask for that same car. And he could get that car for $6,000 cheaper than she could. And those things stick with you as you get older. And just the idea of him confronting the dealer, say, how can you charge my daughter $6,000 more for this car 
then you will sell it to me. That was something that stuck with me. Um, I remember in 1967 when they started what they called choice of school, where you had a choice of where you wanted to go to school. Before then, our schools were hand-me-down books. Uh, the white schools would have the books. After they finished four or five years later, now those books were coming down to the black schools. I remember that. In 67, when you had your choice of school, I told my mom I wanted to go to schools that gave me the same opportunity as everyone else. And sad to, sad to know that when that took place, you still had to deal with uh, prejudice, uh, not only through the students, but through the teachers, also the administration, as well as your school board. I can remember going and protesting at the school board office because of the uh, things that were going on and how things were being treated there. Uh, and I'm sure you guys are also experiencing some type of the same things that took place when I was coming up. You know, I remember uh, going out with baseball players because at that time, all my buddies, because we didn't have many blacks on the football team when I first came here. Very good friend of mine, uh, Stanley Smith. He was one of the ones that got the uh, school from playing Dixie at the football games. You know, that, that was something that uh, I can remember. Uh, as it was mentioned, I was the first African-American player here. And when Coach Gordon came to get me, uh, before he signed me, he made it clear that with me being the first African-American here, that it wasn't going to be, it wasn't going to be, you know, peaches and cream. I would have, you know, things that I need to work on as well as things that people needed to work on. And Coach Gordon, to this day, I still keep in touch with him. He's 90 years old now. And I would call him at least once a month to check on him because, you know, he meant that much to me. Coach Gordon, he looked at me as a human being and not as a basketball player, not as a black individual, but as a young man. And I will always, uh, you know, cherish those moments with him. Uh, I can remember my first year here. As a freshman, I'm coming in my room, and I found a dead bird hanging from the underneath my bed. You know how the bunk beds are, uh, where I was sleeping on the bottom, dead bird hanging there, blood dripping everywhere. Go to Coach Gordon. Uh, we talked about it because at that time I was real close to transferring from here. But during that time, it was one of the uh, teammates that I had. He uh, said it was a joke. You know, I took him for his word. Uh, and my high school basketball coach had applied for a job at Francis Marion. And if he had got that job, I probably would have transferred from here. But as I know God knows best, he uh, kept me here for a reason. And through everything, I have grown into the person that I am today. I can remember my freshman year, I became ineligible because the English teacher that was teaching me Although I passed his class, he felt that I needed to uh, repeat the course because he didn't feel within himself that I, I need to pass it. And when I took the course as a repeat course, I think I made a B in that course, but I had a different teacher. And they warned me beforehand not to take that individual, but as a freshman, 
You, uh, you don't take everybody's word. You go on your own accord. But looking back, you know, hindsight is always 2020. I should have listened. <laughs> um, but you know, the best thing about being here at Newberry, as far as the upside and things like that, I met some incredible people. These gentlemen here, even today with Coach Davis, even back there with uh, Dr. Duffy, those people, you know, they didn't look at me as a, a black man. Uh, back then, you know, you might hear colored a, as something that were being uh, mentioned, other than the N-word that you would hear periodically, you know, and it really burns me, and young people, I want you to take this into account, because when you are talking to among yourselves, you will use that word, and you will use that word freely around everybody, and then when you hear someone else other than your color use that word, now you're offended. If you don't want to be offended, don't use the word. Because all you're doing, you are setting examples for someone else to do that to you. I don't want to look at you as a, a color. I want to look at you as an individual. I want to treat you as an individual. I want to make sure that when you see me, you don't see me as a six. I was 6'10 then. I'm six, seven and a half now. <laughs> My wife, she always get on me. You still 6'10 to me. You know, but you know, I realize as you get older, you do shrink. <laughs> yeah. Um, I can hear uh, Morgan Freeman uh, making this statement. He said the only way to stop racism is to stop talking about it. That means a, that, that is very, uh, a very good sentence and something to think about. And like I said, you know, Coach Gordon, he's 90 years old now, very, uh, incredible man. I remember I wanted to go see a basketball tournament in Columbia because I had just got out of high school. You know, you you still got friends there that are playing. Co Coach Gordon told me, he said, well, I don't have the card to give you to go. Uh, he said, the girls are doing something and they will have the car, but I have the truck. He had one of them little Full speed that was on the column. You guys wouldn't know anything about that. But anyway, when he gave me that truck, I didn't have a clue how to drive it. But guess what? I got the end back. <laughs> but I remember him telling me this. He said, I want you to be careful because I can always get another truck. He said, but I can't get another you. You know, and guess what? Uh, what's that, 39 years later, I can still remember that statement that was spoken. You know, so those are things that I look at. Those things have always been a part of me. I have been teaching going on 42 years. I will retire in June, thank you. Uh, And uh, my wife and I, we are in the process of probably relocating back to South Carolina. Uh, I'm living right outside of Richmond, Virginia now. Been there since 84. You know, so it's, it's a good idea to uh, be coming home. Um, I don't want to take up much of your time. Anybody questions? Okay. I did. Um, it was about your experience here at Newberry. Yes. Did, when did it start to get better? Uh, it got better when we started getting into our own clique. You know, it never got to the point where, although the school was integrated, uh, getting integrated, we still had our segregated uh, uh, things. We felt more comfortable being around one another than 
going out and being embarrassed by, by, by someone else. Anyone else? Yes. What was one of the worst things you had in your dad? Uh, the worst thing I had was uh, probably knowing that I passed the class and becoming ineligible. Uh, knowing that I just didn't let myself, my family down, but I also let my teammates and the school down. Because I think out the, my freshman year, I think we ended up 15 and 10. And each year after that, we got better. Uh, by the time my senior year ended, we were the first team in South Carolina to win 30 ball games. We were 30 and 5 my senior year. And then the team after that turned around and go 36 and 1. <laughs> and they lost on a fluke play to uh, end their season in Kansas City. The thing about Kansas City in the national tournament, you had teams that come out there and you could, they had split it. The first round was split in two days, Monday and Tuesday. Say if you played on a Monday and lost, you was on your flight back by Tuesday morning. <laughs> and if you played on Tuesday, you know, at least you got out there on a Sunday and you still had a day. Uh, but if you lost on Tuesday, you, you are also, you know, leaving out early that Wednesday, the first flight out. And we were very fortunate out there. Uh, my senior year, we beat the defending national champs, Grand Canyon, out there. Um, and then I got injured. I uh, messed up my ankle and uh, couldn't really play. And went out there, tried, but I was hurting the team more than I was helping it. Any other questions? Yes. As far as experience here now, what, what do you have to say to us? I guess from the teams you make Newberry, uh, a whole lot different experience than what you experienced. I want you to not look at color. It's not about color because it's all about how that person is on the inside. The moment you get over color, the better your life will be. Anyone else? Yes. Uh, I don't know. Uh, we have, you know, like a lot of your professors still come to your games here. Um, as an athlete, I must say that they had their favorites. You know, you still had to get your work done. Uh, but you were able, I think as time went along and they realized, you know, that we wasn't we uh, weren't going anywhere, you know, that we were going to be here. And it's amazing because what I see in this room here is probably, it doesn't even compare to when we were all here. I think we had a total of, what, 30, maybe 30 blacks here. Uh, a few was on, off campus. And I look around and I say, wow, Newberry is growing, you know, and it's growing for the better. Yes. How did you not get angry, or what did you do with your anger that you did? How did you deal with that? I couldn't, uh, I couldn't show anger because I had to set examples for the ones that were coming after me. I, uh, and you know, in situations like that, as a black man, you are never disappointed. You know, because it got to the point where if, if uh, everything was going good, something was wrong. You know, you had to uh, face adversity. Uh, you can either learn from it and grow, or you can let it destroy you. And I was not at the point where I was going to let anything destroy me. Yes. 
experience at Newberry College? Oh, my best experience was probably graduating. No, I'm <laughs> <laughs> You know, in four years, I did get my degree, and I used that degree because being a liberal arts school, I've been in education and very successful, you know, in those 42 years. Uh, other than uh, graduating, you know, uh, some of my best years were forming amazing friends, friends that have grown in the 30s, 40s years and will continue to grow. Um, being able to produce something that not only you as an individual could be proud of, but also your college, you know, because uh, Newberry College was proud of the athletes that were here, you know. Uh, uh, we grew on, grew on people, you know, and we continue to do that. I see more and more athletes here that are performing to their highest performance, which is outstanding. Anyone? It was a question. Yes? These two guys are just smiling all the time. Every word is the same. Can you tell a story about those two? Oh, uh, these two here? Yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> Keith was a defensive back when I got here, safety defensive back. Uh, Keith McAllister, uh, he was a senior. And their, their team led the nation in interceptions that year. I think they ended up with like 41 interceptions in, in 10 games. You know, you know so you always, you always had good athletes here. You, you, not only did your athletes perform, but they cared about their school. Uh, and we care about each other. They, they could have found a million things to do other than be here and listen to this old man here. You know, but I appreciate them. They know I love them. I will always love them. Uh, D.D. Boyd, he was, as a freshman, he had 10 interceptions in 10 games by himself. He ended up being an All-American, and every time we talk on the phone, the first thing come out of my mouth is, hey, hey, <laughs> yeah, you know, uh, and we talk periodically as well. The friends that you have here, that you meet in college, are going to be your friends the rest of your life. So cherish them. Anyone else? Yes. Well, when I first started coaching, believe it or not, I started school here early. So my first teaching and head coaching job in Holly Hill, South Carolina, I was 21 years old, just turned 21, and I was the head basketball, volley, girls volleyball, girls softball coach there, as well as the physical education teacher. So, and my salary was $9,500 for all of them, for the coaching and the teaching. That was back in 1977. Um, what, they, what they taught me was to never give up. They taught me that although things might seem bleak and seems like it's unreachable, it can be reached. Uh, in the years that I coached, uh, I was uh, fortunate enough to uh, be an assistant on a football team that won two uh, state championships. I was at a basketball school, longevity coach. I uh, coached under him as an assistant. We had two state championships in basketball. So, you know, we had reached the pedicle. Uh, when it comes to sports, uh, high school sports. Um, also, you 
form a relationship with your players and through Coach Gordon and the way he taught and uh, coached me, I still have players that contact me that I first coached back in 1977. They, they contact me, we talk, you know, uh, when I come to town, we will visit if, if uh, they got uh, something to do. They'll, they'll call some of their friends that they went to school with. Coach King in town, come on by the house. Now it's just like a big old, you know, get together. But we hadn't been doing that since the pandemic. Anyone else? Yes. Do you have any advice you give us future educators? Uh, you need to be fair. Everybody's not the same, but you need to be fair. Uh, if you're not fair, you're going to have problems along the way. Like I tell the uh, kids that I work with today, being in, in corrections, because I work at a detention center, but I teach health and physical education. If I am not fair, then you have a reason to talk about me as an individual. I remember a, a young lady that I uh, coached, uh, not coached, but taught in high school, and she now runs the sheriff's department in Henrico County in Virginia. And I went to one of her cousins, uh, her uncle funeral service years ago, and she said, that man there, that was a mean man right there. I say, well, you was the cause of me being mean. <laughs> but I got one question for you. Was I fair? She said, yeah, I got to admit you was fair. Always be fair. You can't treat everybody the same because everybody's not made the same. You might be able to holler at an individual and another individual, you got to, you know, uh, maybe caress a little bit. But uh, be fair and know, know what you're teaching. Make sure you know what you're teaching. Any other questions? Uh, before you guys leave, since there are no more questions, I have one thing to say. I always like to say something to, to get you to thinking. Uh, did you know that the only thing left out of the Bible, can anybody tell me that? What is the only thing left out of the Bible? Your opinion. <laughs> All right. Thank you.